welcome to the NBS show, episode number 281. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, everybody. How are you doing, man? Everybody's fine for this week, I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, I heard you've been playing the LOE. Yep, Legends of Crash, yeah. Uh, they recently had opened their server, and it's um, quite fun, I think. Quite fun, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it's still quite buggy. I mean, well, good thing we have a Singapore server. Oh, really? No. All right, today. And also joining us today is Twilight Genesis. G'day, Norman. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Norman? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So, anywho. Uh, we got a show to do, and before we head into the news, I like to do some housekeeping. Uh, it seems that Malaysia here is going to show the My Little Pony movie. Yay! That's awesome. Good for you, Norman. Yay! Yep. It's gonna be shown in Australia too, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a month after everywhere else, but still. Hey, still, at least you get to see it in a local theater near you, I have to travel 300 kilometers away. I don't get to go to my local theater. I still have to go to one of the annoying, expensive ones that I don't like traveling to. But at least you'll be with friends, right? Yeah, I get to take friends. It'll be good. I make them pay for me. <laughs> Yay! See, it all works. Road trip. <laughs> yeah, road trip. Uh, but anywho, a movie is going to be shown on October 6th at the One U Mall. It's going to be shown there, and it seems that the local Brony group are going to do some kind of meetup. Now I'm looking at the schedule here, it says 12th October. Hmm. But well, we're not too sure whether or not it's going to be on or not, because it's been a huge question mark with the TGV's arrangement. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. TGV is our uh, local uh, local cinema chain, and yeah, that's the thing here right now. But in the end, um, from what I know is that if there's the mo- uh, from what I know, the movie is going to be shown um twelfth October says the schedule, uh maybe premiere on the sixth. I don't know, but all in all, it's going to be out. So if you guys are in the capital of Malaysia, do try and go watch it because I think that's the only place you can watch it for now. So, yay! Well, at least I do know there's normal screening for the MLP movie. Are they? Yeah, I do hear that it's, this is just a special arrangement for the Bronies. But I do hear that there will still be a normal screening. So it means that the other branch may have the MLP movie. But we do need to see whether or not my local branch, uh, TGV Cinema, will have it or not. You know what, I'm not going to say anything about it because I got no idea. But I do hope that they do because I would watch it multiple times just because I want to catch every little bit of info I can. Just for review purposes. Does that mean you're going to watch the movie and came out and then go back in again? Probably. <laughs> Coin himself and go in all at once. Oh man, I wish I can do the Shadow Clone Jitsu. <laughs> Oh man, uh, but any move aside, let's head into the news. And talking about movies, you know that one song that Sia sang, um, entitled Rainbow? Well, that single is out on Amazon, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. So if you want to go check it out, you can, well, go to one of the few pages I mentioned. And or you can listen it to the Sia's uh, YouTube channel. She also posted there, just it, that um, it took it down. it's only available in the US. No, it's only available in the US. From really? No, from yes. what I saw... It's, uh, um, it, it's Geolock, by the way. No, 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 it's not Geolock. Like, from what I saw, that uh, that post or the song is not available at all. Like, they say that uh, Sia took it down. Was it? I don't really remember. I'm looking at the page right now. It says this video is not available. Yeah, but it's only in USA. Oh, really? No. Well, that sucks. Well, you have Tunnel Bear. <laughs> and we are not sponsored by Tunnel Bear. <laughs> I wish we are. Uh, but still, uh, Twy, can you go check it out? Like, are, are you able to look at that uh, thing? 
I don't think I can. Wait, isn't Sia Australian? I'll get if I know. I've never paid enough attention to Sia. I don't <laughs> think she's uh, that that interesting of an artist. Oh, that, that's not nice. But anywho, um, song is available on all those sites, including her YouTube page. So go check it out. And I do highly recommend Spotify because if you do have Spotify, you can go check it out for free. Personally, for me, I will be heading onto iTunes and get the full album. And the album has 13 songs available to pre-order now. Um, I did pre-order once, did not have a fun experience with pre-ordering on iTunes. So I'll just buy the album when it's out. Or why don't you just buy the hard copy on the Amazon and just let it ship to you. And that way you get a f- proper movie CD. True, but I don't know. I mean... Um, I, I haven't bought anything from Amazon before, so I got no idea how it works. I did check on the Amazon. Uh, they do ship it apparently to Malaysia because uh, in my case, it does ship it to Brunei. So I could actually, if I want to, I could just get it. Huh, this Amazon thing is strange. There's no physical copy. I think this is... Uh, oh, this uh, is the CD. Uh, this is the, oh, the soundtrack version. There's a CD yeah. version. Yeah, I know, but yeah, you know what? That is for a later date, for a later time. I think I'm just going to buy digital, and if I go to a CD store and I see a physical copy, I'll go buy it. It'll be, it'll be fun, you know, <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's the better option. <laughs> yeah. So, thirteen songs, not bad. So, mm-hmm. hmm, all of those tracks are songs. Not hundred percent sure which one are sung, but still. But anywho, on to the next news. So, you know the pony generator, right? Pony OC generator, something like that? I am familiar with the fan-made pony generator. Yeah, and there's never been an official one, right? Um, I don't actually know if there was a, an original official one. Well, if there weren't any before, there is now, and, well, now you can get it in the movie style. Yay, much swag. Yeah, but sadly, it's quite limiting. Uh <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it I've I've messed with it a bit. It is super limited and its only draw is that it's done in the movie style. Uh I I played around with it and it's not bad. And it does work on the pastel color theme very much and you won't get a lot of darker colors. So you're very limited to the pastel colors. The main and tail selection is merged into one, and there's only 12 that you can pick from. I mean, they're, they're okay selections, but they're not great. I really don't like this movie, Pony Generator. Yeah, like I played around with it, and yeah, it, it ain't no fun. I won't say that's true, because from what I see in the EQD chat, a lot of people have done their own OCs, and they're not bad. They're good looking too. Some people have made it, well, you know what? Go to the EQD, um, chat or what is it? Uh, EQD comments on this post specifically and look at all the ponies that were created. Some of the colors are pretty interesting. I, unfortunately for me, I couldn't get the color I want. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, not, uh, neither could I. I tried to, uh, make the two. OCs for one of my fanfics and I couldn't get the main color because you can't really get red. You you can't get browns and beiges uh, too well either. So I couldn't do the coats. And there's only one pose from what I can see. Yeah. And that's just... kind of boring. Yeah, it's the same. You know, the pose is the pose. I don't really mind because yeah, you're working on a generator, so it doesn't really matter that much. But the thing that bothers me is the colors. Like, eh, you're very limited. But what about you, Star? Um, I tried to. I did mess around with it, and um, I'm still quite intrigued by the way they do the naming system. It does the via the story kind of method, but by the time when you finish, it comes out with the some kind of um weird name. And the the thing is that thing is that regarding the, what you call it, the male and female, it doesn't really change much other than you just see that they have a different body shape and that's it. You can't even choose their muzzle. A muzzle is like, it's pretty much fixed and um, 
there's also the fact that um yeah like you just said before the color scheme is also very limiting it is very limiting it's not the normal the 255 uh, uh what you call it, color scheme if i'm not mistaken i can't remember what is that called something like that but still it's very limited and yeah can can be helped but it's free it's there for people who are interested in doing something with it so yeah knock yourself out and then again people actually did um reuse the code uh from the html and they changed the wordings and well they managed to do a bit of custom uh, names out of it <laughs> oh people in their text oh those people do we <laughs> Uh, but anywho, uh, talking about OCs, um, here's something very interesting. Um, if you went to Hascon as a VIP attendee, uh, it seems that you were given some papers to fill in. Papers, please. <laughs> in all seriousness, this is for people who attended taking a personality task, asking about their favorite color, special talent, and various other character building questions. So it seems that Two lucky winners will have their OC in Season 8. And the third guy will get an exclusive free ticket to the premiere of the My Little Pony movie. Yay! That lucky guy again. I I think I would have preferred winning the free ticket to the movie over getting an OC into the show. Oh no, I want a movie in the show. Sorry, I I want an OC on the show, man. Nah, I I, I want to save the money. I'd rather save the money. Oh, I, I really, I wouldn't mind having a look at the, uh, the, the sheets that were given just to see exactly what was asked and what was put on them. Oh yeah, I would like to see that too. It's really interesting to know how they do the process because from what we know here, it's just a pamphlet, Q&A and stuff, no character description or anything. So it'll be interesting to see the person's OC when it goes on to the show. I'm guessing main and coat colors will be really interesting, really out of the blue. It will oh. definitely be interesting. I wonder if they'll announce beforehand uh, which episodes the OCs are in. Hmm. You know, that'll be interesting to know. But like the past two Make-A-Wish Foundation OCs that got in, not really mentioned until... They appeared, so maybe we'll get that kind of scenario too. And Storm, you were saying? Regarding the OC, I do want to see how they're going to do it though. All of us too, because it's interesting to know what they're going to do. I mean, have you gotten a pony on the show that has a fro? I think we have. Hmm. Was it the one on the bowling one? Probably, I think so. Huh? I, don't yeah. rem- I don't remember. Yeah, Pony hairstyle would be interesting to see with how... The envision set thing is going to be. Ah, but still. Um, that aside, that's the news for this week. Let's head on to this new topic I want to do where it's basically us talking about stuff that happens in the week. Uh, well, technically that's what I've been up with our week. You know what? Let's go for that. What have we been doing with our week? So, Twy, what have you been doing, man? Not a lot. I, I guess a bit of gaming and just listening to the same three songs on YouTube all week. It's been kind of a, a slow, uneventful time. Okay, first thing, what game? And second, what song? An Aviator's song called... Uh, I'm going to have to look up the names. But a game I've been playing is Arkham Asylum. I started playing it last week and then finished it earlier this week. It's really worth the money. Like That was a triple A title game on the PlayStation and Xbox 360 back in the days. But you can get it now for dirt cheap. Yeah, uh, my mate actually bought the double uh, pack of Arkham Asylum and Arkham City for PS4. Oh wow! And he hasn't touched them yet, but he lent them to me. So I've been I played all the way through Asylum, and I've started City, but it hasn't grabbed me the same. So I haven't gotten very far. And the songs that I've been listening to have been Fading Light by Aviators which is a Dark Souls-inspired uh, song. Oh, wow. Uh, an English cover of a Vocaloid song called Hide and Seek, mm-hmm. uh, covered by Liz Robinette. And another song covered by Liz Robinette, which is an English version of Bad Apple. Oh, all right. I've just been listening to those three songs all week. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing more, really? Yep. I, I can be very focused when I when I find songs I like. I can listen to them for hours on end. All righty then. All righty then. You probably could put Sia's Rainbow on the list too if you want to. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I'm going to be listening <laughs> to that song. <laughs> oh. uh, what about you, Star? Um, for my case, a uh, few things kind of happened. Um, one was uh, recently there was a Nintendo Direct for the oh, yeah. review of the uh, new Nintendo games um, that will be coming uh, in the few months' time or within this month. There's also a recent, I just, uh, recent release for Cooks of Delicious too, in which it's a game that you are kind of a chef that you work in a restaurant and it involves a lot of, um, keyboard typing. What? Kind of game and just been watching people playing it. There's also, um, the review of a uh, Apple iPhone, oh. the new iPhone. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we, we need to we need to talk about that one soon enough. But um, carry on. Can't really remember what else I did. Um, overall, I think it's been a kind of uh, unique week. I think. I mean, just uh-huh. been a normal week. I think. Other than uh-huh. uh, catching up on some other stuff. Yeah, and there was a recent release of um, MLP movie, the second trailer or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, that that one too. Yeah, I, I seen it and. Uh, I, I, from what I saw, I like it, but I'm gonna put my expectations a bit low because if I hype it up that much, then I'm gonna be disappointed it didn't reach to my expectations. So I'm just going there and I'm gonna enjoy it for what it is. But the thing is, um, I'm traveling 300 kilometers to the north to go watch the movie. So yeah, expectations. Even if it's low, my price to go watch the movie is more than what it should have been. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, at least you get to travel 300 km by um, by ground or by air. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. For my case, it's 600 km. Ugh, that's even worse. And my time is even worse because um, let's just say that I need to... Uh, I can't really get myself off from the company. EL, EL, emergency leave. <laughs> I can't though, sadly, because it's uh-huh. a, uh, what you call is the important period of time for the company. Alrighty then. Oh man. Uh, but you mentioned Nintendo Direct. So from what I heard, that they really announced a lot of things, like um, the the few things like the Mario Odyssey, uh, snipper clips, and what else did they mention? Um, a, f- a few things. They, like, uh, for, they uh, mentioned the Xenoblade Chronicles too. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, there was Kirby, obviously mm-hmm. Mario, the Super Mario Odyssey, and just review some stuff. There's also Fire Emblem's Warriors. There's also the Metroid Samus Return. I think of all of all the games, they did announce some indie games like the Golf Story that's gonna release, uh, and then there's also some Atlas games. Mm-hmm. But um, the most important one I think would be no, not really the important, but a bit interesting kind of game called the Project Octopath. That is exclusive for the Switch. Hmm. It's based on the, uh, what do you call it? It's based on the pixel graphic style kind of RPG. Is that the one where it's an RPG where it's in 2D characters in 3D planes? Yeah, but they call it the 2D HD kind of ah, game because yeah, it's that. pixel, but it's HD. All right, all right. A lot of potential for that one too. Uh, no, I do must add on though. I recently did get my, um, Bill Bear, um, Songbird Serenade and uh, Temper Shadow. Ah, nice. Yeah, enjoying them. Do they look good? They do look good. Uh, other than the Songbird Serenade, the main is a bit because it's tied up on u- using the rubber band. When I remove it and it doesn't, what do you call it? It still have a bit of what do you call it, gap. I still need to try to push it down so that it covers the eyes. But overall, it's really great plush. What about um, Tempest? She has the broken horn thing. So how's that working for her? Yeah, pretty much still the broken horn, and she pretty much still look very edgy as usual. Uh, edgy look pony. Right. And um, <laughs> and the armor is actually very nice. Huh. and that's extra or built in? Extra. Ah, painful. Ah, but still, um, it's all worth it. So, yep. um, let's see. Uh, what happened with me? Well, um. With me for this week, nothing much really besides the whole usual thing that I've been doing. But I 
think for new things that caught my attention was the Apple Keynote. Uh, more specifically with the new iPhones that will be coming out, um, iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. Why there's no 9? Simple, 789. <laughs> 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 ah! <sighs> Wait, how the window dodge the 9? The same thing. The well, as they say, they can't count up to 9. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but funny enough, there is an iOS 9, so... <laughs> Uh, but that's besides the point. Um, iPhone aside, um, I, we'll go through that a bit more. Besides the whole thing about the iPhones, nothing new uh, except for a new game coming out next week will be uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I am very excited for that one. Haven't done any pre-orders for that, but I will be playing that one soon enough. And a game that I have been playing besides the Overwatch and Paydays is Sonic Mania. It is a fun game. It is a fun game. <laughs> so if you're a big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, especially the old ones from 1, 2, 3, Knuckles and also CD, yeah, uh, Sonic Mania is the game for you. It's really, really good. I haven't played a Sonic game since I owned a Sega Master System. Oh, wait, Master System? Is that Master System 8-bit? Uh, no. 16, I think. I thought that was the Genesis Hmm. Now Google's gonna destroy the show, but let's see. Uh, Sega. Yeah, it is the eight-bit version. Huh? You have that toy? I, I guess. I'm pretty sure it was the Master System that I had. Yeah, because from what I see, the Master System was the competing console for the Nintendo Entertainment System, the the NES. Huh? Well, yeah. either or. Uh, games is game. I, I had the Master System 2, specifically. Ah, the upgraded version. I'm pretty sure it was the Master System 2 anyway. Clean it up, sell it for money, littles. Uh, I mean, it still works, but I'd rather play it than sell it. Uh, true, keep it, keep it for collection purposes. Wait until some rich guy who's really, really rich wants to buy it off you for any amount you give. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, point, I, um, I, I've still got all my games on it. And oh, I'm pretty wow. sure I've got Echo the Dolphin. Echo the Dolphin on the Master System? Alex wow. Kid and all that. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay. Um, Keep it, man. Like, wow. Uh, that's been what I've been doing. If you guys seen my, whatchamacallit, phone, uh, when we went to the Siponicon convention, it's really old. It's not the latest and greatest, but it works. It works. And with the announcement of the new iPhones, I thought about maybe upgrading. So I want to know what you guys think. Like, I know Twy, you said that you're not a big fan of the iPhones. Any reason why? They're bad. And the Apple products. And the Apple products are automatically bad because Apple is bad. I, I don't like Apple or anything they make. I mean, who creates a phone and then decides, oh, let's remove the headphone jack. Just, why? Why would that ever sound like a good idea? Hmm. All right. I I got a rebuttal, man. Like, if you think if you think about it, right? Like, would Steve Jobs approve of this idea? Hmm. Yeah, but he stole most of his ideas, so yeah, I, mean, I don't still... exactly care what Steve Jobs says. No, I mean it's not that even even if he does steal ideas or not. But the thing is, if it's a good idea to push it product in the way that it is because hey we want to make money but at the same time too we want people to enjoy their product so let's remove the headphone jack <laughs> all in the name of coming up with more ways to make money indeed indeed but not a big fanny eh? no not really namely my uh, mostly because yeah, from a from a computer standpoint any computer you can buy from Apple, you can probably build the same thing uh, and use the Windows OS for about half the price and have just as much, if not a bit more power. Uh, that I do agree. I do agree with that one. What about you, Star? What do you think of the new phones? My answer is that it's very fancy. But it's so fancy that it has such a fancy price. And the next thing you know is that in the next year again, it's going to release another new variation of the iPhone X. Uh, true. 
So in the end, if you decide to get it, might as well you just get one or two Gen B4. <laughs> if you want to save money. Because this, this trend will just gonna be going sky up again. In terms of pricing. So wait, you're, you're saying that if I want to get anything, I should get the model before the 10, right? So like a 6 or a 7. Yep. But yeah. then again, my question to you, my, mm-hmm. well, my, my suggestion is that don't go for Apple. Because I have Apple phone and I don't really like it. But I got no choice. Because the fact that Apple's means whatever you want to do with it, sorry, you have to, either you're going to jailbreak it or um something else. Because you have no access to the ability to use your phone as a USB drive. So that's one problem. Hmm. All right, but here's the thing. Like I saw when I saw you last, you had a few phones from the iPhone six to the Samsung something, and also a uh, Galaxy Note one. Yeah, Galaxy Note one, and also other various phones. Like, I think you have three phones with you, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. If you, if you dislike the Apple product, why have the Apple product in the first place? Let's just say that my relative gave it to me. Uh, all right. Because my, my original phone that I was using was Galaxy Note 1. But the fact that because my charging phone, uh, the jack was broken because I accidentally bent the pin. So next thing I know, I had to order from eBay and I have to wait at least a month. So it means that one month of no phone usage. Oh, you fixed that thing yourself? Yeah, I fixed it myself. Oh, wow. It just cost right. me about like, um, how much was it? Uh, about, uh, US five six bucks like that. Wow. That's well, cheap. free. Sh- yep. Yeah, uh, just got it from Hong Kong instead. Uh, from eBay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And it works. So yay. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 So well. Okay. Um. Honestly, for me, with the iPhone ten, I was interested in it because of the camera and how it looks. But after hearing, uh, a lot of people talk about it. Not the people on the Facebook and whatnot, mind you. It's people like um, tech bloggers that I uh, admire and follow, especially a guy called Chris Perillo. I've heard his opinion, his full opinion on said phone. And from what he said is that the aesthetic doesn't look good. Why must they have that nub at the top of the screen? Like, couldn't they do anything about it and stuff? And after hearing about him talk about something like that and so on and I started thinking can I live with it? And the answer is yes, I can. It won't bother me that much. But the thing that bugs me is that the price is about a thousand dollars for a phone. And with how my currency here versus the phone is technically I'm gonna I have to spend about um Four point five thousand to get the stupid phone, the base model, mind you. So it's not even worth it if you think about it. Uh, well, frankly speaking, is uh, well, it is not worth it. Like I said, um, this actually, if you get the Android, there's actually way a lot of cheaper models. Of, I mean, there's a lot of uh, option for you if you choose Android. I mean, you can go for like the super, ch- the budget phones like the. What do you call it? This uh, Mi Phone from the China or Oppo. That's that's not bad. If you're a bit techy, you could go for like Asus Phone. If you want high end, just go for Samsung. But here's the thing: with me and Android, if I were to pick an Android phone, I would go for the Huawei P10, just because of the dual lens camera from uh, Leica. But the thing is, my whole digital media or digital tech that I bring along with me has been Apple from the very beginning. So I can't really escape that fact that I'm an Apple guy. Bought a lot of products from Apple in terms of app and software, um, songs and contact lists and whatnot. So I'm kind of stuck with it. I've tried to think about how if I were to transfer to an Android and the fact is that I don't think I can or I want to. I, I've been too integrated to the Apple family or the Apple ecosystem that I can't really escape it. So the next leap in logic is 
I could have just gone for, here's the two options that I could go for. The iPhone 8, which is not that expensive, or don't buy anything, just keep the one I have now. So those are the two options I have right now. And I don't know, uh, maybe if I do get a new phone, you'll see me doing an unboxing. If I don't, then no video then. <laughs> but phones aside, I think that's been going on with our week, right? Yep. So, anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. What about you guys? Twy, where can the good people find you, man? They can find me on DeviantArt and Film Fiction under Twilight Genesis. They can find me on Facebook and YouTube under Double Pint Productions, and you can tweet at me on Twitter under at Midnight underscore Pint. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And what about you, Star? People can find me on my DeviantArt, Angelic, or XX, or my Twitter, which is also the same thing. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrintedLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, please do subscribe to our latest endeavor, the NBC Reviews and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll get to hear me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, and Guest of the Week talk about the My Little Pony comics, movies, and episodes, and also other side topics like movies from other shows, video games, and other things that interest us. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Over there, you'll get exclusive content to, um, well, you get <laughs> exclusive contents, deleted contents, and also early access to the review show, which I'm trying to post out a few days earlier than what's going to be on the iTunes and YouTubes. So if you want to catch it out early, do go on the Patreon. And also a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Nem Dragatoria, Starstream, and also myself Lag. Thank you so much guys for the awesome support that you've been giving me for all this time. Thank you so much. And well, I have been Roman Sanzo. See ya. Cheers. And we'll guys see you next week. Bye bye guys. Bye.